Hi, and welcome to our video of a visit to Lamb House in Rye, East Sussex, maintained by the National Trust. We are in the southeast of England, as I mentioned, in the county of East Sussex, and Rye sits close to the coast. Getting to Rye means a trip through the countryside, either by rail or by car. The station is to the north of the town, and there are plenty of car parks dotted around if you choose to drive. Google says it's a five minute walk from the station to Lamb House. As you can see, it's pretty central, but Rye is quite small. If you'd like to see more of Rye itself, I'll pop our video of the town up at the end. In this visit, we'll focus on Lamb House and its gardens. So without further ado, let's take a look. Lamb House was built in 1723 for a James Lamb, a wealthy wine merchant, but that's not what makes it special. It became home to authors such as Henry James and E.F. Benson, and King George I also once stayed here. As well as the house, the gardens are of a period and may interest you, so let's step inside and take a look. In 1902, Henry James had Ryan's first telephone installed here, and as is always the case, the National Trust maintained the features of the time. Now let's return to James Land, and as well as being a wine merchant, he also dabbled in wood, and his oak parlour was probably part showroom. Lamb House stayed in the Lamb family until it was sold in 1893 to a wealthy local banker, Francis Bellingham. It was in 1897 that Henry James leased Lamb House and fell in love with it. He bought it outright two years later. The dining room appears to be laid out for breakfast, as it may have been for Henry James, with his portrait hanging over the fireplace. It's from the dining room you can enter the garden, and we'll do that shortly. Next we visit the green parlour. This is where Henry James and E.F. Benson enjoyed writing during the cooler months. The garden room where the authors worked during the summer was destroyed in a wartime bombing raid in 1940. Now we enter the King's room, and we need to transport ourselves back to James Lamb's time in 1726. A storm drove a ship carrying King George I ashore at nearby Camber. James Lamb, who was a prominent local figure, offered his home as refuge. He gave up his bedchamber for the King, and from that moment on, this room has been known as the King's Room. There's no evidence to how the room would have looked, but it's believed the wood panelling would have been in place. Our next room is the White Parlour, and this room details the history of 300 years of Lamb's House. You get to see the destruction of the garden room, the story of how Lamb House became the home for a literary set, and how the fictional mallards from E.F. Benson's Map and Lucia was really Lamb House. That connection led to Lamb House being used in the 2014 BBC TV miniseries based on the adventures of Map and Lucia. It's now time to step into the garden. This was the brainchild of Henry James, but he didn't know much about gardening, so he enlisted the help of his good friend and garden designer, Alfred Parsons. I know I keep mentioning Henry James, but I have to be honest, I only know Henry James through the reference to him in the movie Notting Hill. I've never read any of his works. But I have heard of some of his chums who came over to visit part of his ring of conspirators, the likes of H.G. Wells, Ford Maddox Ford and Rudyard Kipling, who lived just 20 miles away at Bankman's. Did you catch our video on that? I'll pop a link up at the end, and also a link to our video on Rye if you're interested. As always, if you're enjoying this then please give us a like. If this video style suits you then why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future content. Okay, housekeeping done. Let's get back to the garden. And I would say this is a well-managed, typical, if there can be such a thing, English country garden. This is not too dissimilar to the way we have modelled our garden. I can see familiar blooms and collections. 
and like ours it's very seasonal. This was shot in July, so we're in summer. Where we differ is the vegetable patch. And talking of differences, those familiar with National Trust properties may expect a coffee shop or a tea room. Or that second hand bookshop. No, not here. But of course you're in right, so step outside and you will be spoiled for choice. So while I'm not familiar with the works of Henry James, I am familiar with the stories of Mappa Lucia. Okay, from the TV adaptations. And this seems the perfect playground for the protagonist to enjoy life in the roaring twenties. This is a garden to explore that has hidden passages, dark corners that lead to who knows where. When you've had your little wander, you'll discover, ultimately, they lead you back to the well-manicured lawn. It seems to be the perfect place to bring a book, find a spot of shade, and sit back, relax, and enjoy a timeless slice of England. I'll leave you in peace for a moment to enjoy it. No, that's not a tea room. It houses seasonal events. Check the National Trust website for more details. There's a link in the description below. It's now time to say adieu. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and happy travels.